What's going on YouTube? So minivans used to be in a world of their own, competing only against each other in a small segment. But now in a world with an abundance of three row SUVs, minivans really had to step up their game, which is what we've seen with the Kia Carnival. Today we're with the latest 2024 version, and we want to know how does this stack up against other minivans like the Sienna, as well as three row crossovers like the Telluride? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's kick things off here under the hood. So the Carnival keeps things simple. There's only one powertrain selection. That is a 3.5 liter V6 engine, naturally aspirated and making 290 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. Now, as far as the transmission, it's an eight-speed automatic paired to front wheel drive only. And as far as your fuel economy is concerned, it's sitting at 22 miles a gallon combined. Now, of course, we're gonna go out for a detailed test drive later on in the video tell you things about how comfortable it is, as well as get things like our signature sound level reading. But first we're gonna close up the hood and take a look at this pretty stylish exterior. Like we were saying at the beginning, minivans have to compete with more vehicles than ever. And I think because of that, Kia really took a more SUV-like approach to this carnival when it comes to the front end design. Now for 2024, we're not gonna see any styling changes and you'll still continue to have a couple different grille choices. So you always have kind of that tiger nose shape that's typical, but on your lower two trim levels, you'll have this bar design. And then once you get to the SX, that's gonna go for a dark chrome mesh through the center. You'll always have your Kia emblem up there on top of the hood. And as we go over to the headlights, you'll always have a very unique looking headlight arrangement as well. So it's actually made of three separate components. So you have standard LED headlights on all models. This is your low beam. Your high beam is actually over here integrated into the grill. And then in between, you've got this wiggly daytime running light and then your incandescent turn signal indicator. If you choose the SX Prestige, that's going to upgrade your headlights from reflector LEDs to projector LEDs. And if you get above the SX trim level, that's gonna give you LED fog lights as well. And as we come around to the rear design, you're gonna see a more boxy squared off look than your typical minivan. Yeah, I like the way it looks, especially here in person. We actually just got out of a Sienna and this definitely has a less minivan look here in the back. But Drew's gonna go ahead and hop inside and let's check out our taillights, see if all the elements are LED. So we have an incandescent brake light, incandescent reverse light, incandescent turn signal indicator. So none of the elements are LED. I'm a little disappointed by that, not gonna lie. And it's gonna be that way if you go for any trim level besides for that top end SX Prestige. When you add that, you will get LED tail lights. So that's gonna be one thing that I'm a little disappointed in is that only the top trim gets LED lighting. Now, as far as other design touches, you'll notice this chrome piece goes seamlessly from the back side into the rear, and then dropping down to this lower area, gonna have some silver accenting. As far as your tow rating, it's 3,500 pounds, and no Carnival will have exposed exhaust outlets. Moving on to the wheels, you have a nice selection of mostly stylish options. The base LX will come with 17-inch alloy wheels. However, once you get to the EX trim level, it's gonna upgrade you to these 19-inch contrast alloy wheels. I really like the way these look. I think they really pop against the ceramic silver paint color on this model. And if you choose the SX or SX Prestige, you'll get the same wheels, but fully gloss black. Moving up to the mirrors, we do have a gloss black finish on the lower part. You have standard heating and standard blind spot monitoring. And if you want power folding, you can get that, but you'll need to get at least the SX trim level. Now at the side of the Carnival, you're once again going to see that boxy shape continue that makes it look a lot more SUV-like than other minivans. Now as far as some of the other design elements, we do have this uh, really cool textured piece right here. It doesn't show up as well on this specific color, but if you go for a black one, this really has a lot of contrast and I like the way it looks. Also if you go for higher end models, you will get roof rails as well as some silver accenting around your windows and lower piecings. Now as far as the overall length, we're looking at 203 inches long for this carnival. 
Now for your safety systems, let's go ahead and talk about that. Kia is including three out of your four active safety features as standard equipment on the Carnival. If you go for at least the EX trim level, that will, that will further add in adaptive cruise control and SX will additionally add in rear auto braking. So yes, you're gonna be protected even when your kids start flicking boogers at you and you get all distracted on the road, Kia has you covered. But guys, that's gonna wrap up the exterior design of this Carnival. And if you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. Now let's move on to the more important interior. First, we'll take a look at our key fob. Uh, this in design looks like the typical Kia Q5, but it is a little different because we've got the additional buttons for the power doors. You do have standard smart entry as well as standard remote start on all versions of the Carnival. And to get inside, there's not a sensor behind the handle, so you're just going to press this black button that will unlock the door. Now taking a look inside the cabin, it has a very traditional shape to it. And I want to start off, as always, by talking about interior color and material choices. So the LX is the only model that's going to come with cloth seating. Everything else will come with leatherette up until you get to the SX Prestige, and that's going to get you real leather. This, of course, is the EX trim level, so this is going to be a leatherette. However, it's very realistic feeling. We've got some nice uh, perforation and stitching details throughout. As far as color choices, you've got the choice between gray or saddle brown. This is the gray option, although as you can see, the seats basically are black and many of the other elements inside the cabin are what is a light gray. Down below, we do have power adjusting seat on all but the base model. It's gonna be eight-way power adjusting here. You get four-way lumbar if you go up to the SX, and that's also the model that's going to start out with memory seating. But let's go ahead and climb inside. Now that we're inside the cabin here, let's go ahead and look at the rest of the materials. So we'll start out over here with our door trim. We have a nice leather material through here, a piano black finish around the window switches and above that as well. And speaking of the window switches, let's talk about this. Uh, this actually is our only 2024 change. It's kind of a weird one, but for the EX trim levels, now only the driver's window is gonna be auto up and down. Previously, all four of the windows were auto up and down. Moving on from that though, we do have a full leatherette covered dashboard. And then all through the center here, we have a very realistic faux wood trim. This is gonna be on EX and SX trim levels. The other trim levels will come with a faux textured aluminum instead. All your central tunnel area, area will be finished in a piano black plastic and no padding along the console. But to fire it up, we'll just put our foot on the brake and press the button. Now, like always, we'll go ahead and move into a first-person perspective for a closer look at the details, starting with our gauge cluster. So we've got a traditional arrangement on board. As you can see, it is analog, besides for our 4.2-inch multi-function display right there in the middle. If you want something a little bit more modern, though, you can get that. You have a full 12.3-inch digital gauge cluster standard on the SX trim level and SX Prestige. Now moving back to the steering wheel, typical Kia design here. It is going to be leather wrapped on all but the base LX. It will always be manual tilt and telescoping. And then steering wheel heating does come on the SX Prestige model. But this is a minivan after all. So let's go ahead and talk about interior storage. So this is one of the areas that's kind of different about the Carnival versus its competition because of this more traditional SUV-like approach they've been taking with this model. Uh, you don't have perhaps as much functionality as you do in some of the competition, but you do still have a pretty good amount of space. So underneath our center console, as you can see, uh, nicely sized center console area, goes down pretty deep. You do have a felt lining at the bottom. This is gonna fit in all of our coupons, no problem whatsoever. Up in front of that, we have another little slot where you can stick some additional things. You have your two cup holders right there in the front. And then you've got another storage area with a wireless phone charging pad. And that starts out on the EX trim level. But as you can see, there is no center pass through like you get on the Sienna. So like I was saying, a little bit less space for all your parenting essentials, such as diapers, bottles, Xanax, etc. All right, now moving on to our shifter here. As you can see, traditional style, pull back for drive. Bump to the left if you want to shift manually for some reason, but there are no paddle shifters on the steering wheel. 
As we go into reverse, you're gonna see a traditional backup camera with active trajectory on board. Off to the side of that, we have a visualization because we have standard rear parking sensors on all trim levels. Once you get to the EX trim level, that's where you're gonna get the front parking sensors as well. And then a 360 camera on the SX and above. And then right behind that, you have your electronic parking brake with brake hold. Now if we slide right behind that, you're gonna find your seat controls. This is a three-stage heated seat, of course, gonna be included on the LX with seating package and above. If you want seat ventilation, you can upgrade to the SX trim level. And then as far as your climate controls, you do have a three zone automatic climate setup on the vast majority of trim levels, all but the base model as a matter of fact. Very simple to use here. You have these toggles to adjust the temperature up and down. Uh, some of these controls are gonna be touch capacitive such as adjusting the fan, but it is nice and responsive. Right above that, we have some physical controls for our audio system choices as well. So you have a standard six speaker sound system you upgrade to an eight speaker sound system for your middle trim levels and then only the SX Prestige will come with a branded Bose 12 speaker sound system. So since we've got that middle EX trim, let's go ahead and give the system a sample. Overall sound quality of this is actually pretty good. Uh, really fills up the cabin nicely. Okay, so let's move on and discuss the main display here. So there's gonna be two different choices um, in terms of the display. Eight inches on just your base LX model. Everything else will get the 12.3 inch display you see right here. Now, as far as functionality, you do have some differences. I think the most important one to mention is the fact that Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are gonna be wireless on just the base screen. And then if you have the 12.3 inch display, you will need to plug in your device with a USB connection to be able to have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay abilities. Now with the larger display, you've got a built-in navigation system. As you can see, this can expand and take up the entire display. And then there are some mini minivan specific uh, features to talk about as well. So first of all, you do have the passenger talk system. That's basically an intercom system. So the microphone picks it up, project your voice back to the third row so people can hear you. We also have this button right here. So this is passenger view. Basically, uh, this is just going to be a uh, cabin camera in essence. So you can see in high definition what your rear occupants are doing up to no good. You can zoom in on Mason, see, what, see who he's texting maybe. <laughs> Um, so basically a spy cam for your kids could be helpful for all those parents out there Up above that uh, we do have a manual dimming mirror you can get an auto dimming one uh, on the SX prestige and Then you also notice up here at the top No sunroof is going on and that's because you cannot get a sunroof until you get to the SX prestige and that one's going to give you a dual panel setup now the rear seats and the third row are probably the most important part about a minivan. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Now we do have a power door. I do also want to mention it has the uh, smart ability, kind of like the tailgate. If you approach with the key fob, it'll beep a few times and open up the door. You don't have the kick ability though. Now, as far as, uh, some of this space. Let's go ahead and talk about that first. 40.5 inches of leg room, 39.5 inches of headroom. So really good space figures. Obviously this is a minivan, so space is very important. It's going to be a little bit less than that of the Toyota Sienna for reference, but overall you're going to have no issues in terms of space unless you're like seven and a half foot tall. And then at that point, they're not much of a kid anymore, are they? Now, as far as uh, the seat, this is slid all the way back in its tracks. This seat is adjusted to Drew, who is five foot eight. And I did bring my bendy ruler. We're looking at about 10 inches of space and my feet can slide up underneath the seat. Now, as far as um, the seat itself, we can slide that forward a great deal. So if you need to reach back there and smack your kid, you can have the seat adjusted all the way back or all the way frontwards. 
and then you can also slide it back quite a bit. Not as long as the super slide seat in the Sienna though. This middle seat though, I do wanna point out, can go back all the way to the third row, which is really nice. Now for the seats, you will notice that we have bench seating. That's actually the standard seat setup on all but the very base LX trim level. The LX trim level can also opt to have bench seating in the back, the LXS, that will give you your eight passenger seating. Now, as far as this middle seat, you can use it as a seat, or if you pull that lever, you better watch out because it will sandwich anything you have in the seat. This actually transforms into an entire table, so you can have all your kids' snacks right here. They also have two cup holders in the back, which is really quite nice. Now, additionally, if you want extra bougie features on the SX Prestige, you can get a VIP lounge seat. I'll insert a picture of what that looks like, but it's basically just executive level rear seat, heated and ventilated, power adjusting, all types of stuff going on in the rear seat area. So if you're gonna be driven around in your minivan, you might wanna opt for that. As far as other features, here in the center, two cup holders, 12 volt outlet. Dropping below that, there's a little storage cubby. We have USB ports in the back of each seat back. And then let's go up to the roof. Here on the right side, we have our own climate controls. We have three zone automatic climate on this. I'm not sure why they put it on the right side only. It's a little discriminatory is all I gotta say because people in the left seat can't get over to the climate controls. Now, as far as other things, vents out of the ceiling. We also have some lighting. Here's your spy camera. You also have this button to speak as well as an assist grip. And coming down to your door trim, we do have rear window sunshades on EX trim levels and above. I also want to point out rear seat entertainment is available if you want that. And let's get into the third row. So we're going to get back here. They have made it pretty easy. You just grab this little lever right here. By doing so, that slides the uh, seat forward as well as kind of pushes the back forward. And that allows for a really easy entry into the third row. Now... As far as the third row is concerned, this is a very comfortable place to spend time once I get that uh, headrest out of my back. Ah, very, very nice. Now, as far as the space is concerned, 35 inches of legroom, 38 inches of headroom. Really impressive figures for any third row. Uh, it is a little bit less than the Sienna as well as Honda Odyssey, but guys, you're really just splitting hairs at this point because the third row is just so, so nice. This seat is slid all the way back. I still have about two... Well, I have my ruler here. Three inches of space between my knees and the seat back. I can also slide my feet up underneath the seat. The thigh support is fantastic. As far as other features, we have two cup holders, a little storage cubby right here. We're also gonna have a third row window sunshades. That's also on EX trims and above. We have vents out the ceiling. And as far as on our third row rating scale, this is really pretty much fit for a king. Now walking up to the Carnival's tailgate, we do have a hands-free smart opening power one on ex trim levels and above so all but the base lx will have a power tailgate now as far as the space is concerned back here in the carnival you're gonna have a class leading figure we are looking at 40 cubic feet of space behind the third row if we fold the third row down it's a real nice easy uh, setup here we're looking at about 87 cubic feet of cargo capacity go ahead and get this one down for simplicity's sake and then with all the seats removed we're looking at 145 cubic feet of cargo capacity so that is just incredible amounts of space in this carnival like i said that is class leading that's really bigger than it's actually bigger than a Suburban in terms of the amount of space you're going to have back here. So there is just a lot of usability with this Carnival. One thing I want to point out, though, if you go for that fully loaded SX Prestige with the VIP seating, you cannot remove the second row seat. So that does actually impact your maximum cargo capacity. And I went ahead and folded down the second row seats. And I'm going to get our signature measuring from the front of the seat back all the way to the rear of the cargo area. I'd say looking at about 91 inches of space. So that's certainly a very good amount as far as the width on it. We're sitting at about 48 inches um, wide on this carnival. So that means you're gonna be able to fit a lot of stuff in this. Um, that's pretty much our biggest size category. I believe you'd be able to fit a full size couch if you remove the second row seats in this carnival.
Well guys, here we are behind the wheel of the 2024 Kia Carnival. In this test drive, we're gonna be talking about a lot of different things. You can see it on the screen right now. Uh, we will also be getting our signature sound level reading, so stay tuned for that. But first, we're gonna go ahead and start with a hard acceleration to see what this Carnival is all about. So like we were mentioning with the spec dump, uh, you do have that standard V6 engine. It's 3.5 liters. And to remind you, the power, 290 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque. That's one of the uh, higher power outputs in the segment. Um, so it really makes this feel plenty powerful when you're behind the wheel. As you just saw, zero to 60 uh, really doesn't take too long at all. and has a very refined sound to it as well while you're accelerating. Yeah, we were just talking about this just a little bit off camera. Um, we actually had a week long tester Sienna. Um, so we just came directly out of driving that for a week into this carnival. And I think a lot of buyers are really gonna appreciate that smooth V6 refinement. Now, are there trade-offs? Yes, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the drive, but the V6 refinement is so, so good in this model. Uh, even under really hard accelerations, it stays refined, it stays uh, nice and not strained sounding. Um, so that's a really big benefit that you're gonna get with this Carnival as opposed to uh, something like the Toyota Sienna. So let's talk about the other aspect of the powertrain. That's gonna be the transmission, of course. Eight-speed automatic transmission. This is the same as, a, as in other Hyundai and Kia products. Very nice and smooth transmission. Really don't have any complaints here. It's nice and responsive. When you put your foot down, you get your additional power added quite quickly. Now, one thing to consider, yeah. though, is that this is front-wheel drive only. So. Some of the vans, uh, Sienna is one of them, are offering all-wheel drive at this point, um, but you cannot get that here with the Carnival. And that I, is the difference, you know, between yeah. this and like the Telluride, for instance. Yeah, now for the Odyssey, the Odyssey is also front-wheel drive only, right. so two of them just drove <laughs> by. Um, so it's not like the only thing in the segment. Honestly, it's not a huge uh, deal to me to have all-wheel drive in a minivan, but for a lot of you guys, you're wanting that extra all-wheel drive uh, peace of mind. Um, so that is a little bit of something to consider with the Carnival. Now, as far as your fuel economy is concerned, it's going to be pretty decent fuel economy. 19, 26, 22 miles a gallon combined for all the models because we only have one uh, front-wheel drive as well as one engine option. But now that we're getting up to speed here on our designated stretch of road, I do want to talk about our ride quality for the Carnival. Coming directly out of the Sienna, that's one of the most comfortable vehicles that money can buy. This Carnival also is one of the most comfortable vehicles money can buy. It is just so incredibly smooth. Um, when you hit a bump, it does not translate much into the cabin at all. Um, it's just going to be one of those vehicles you can cruise down the highway and you're going to be enjoying every second of it in complete comfort. But we're also on our designated strip of road to get our signature sound level reading. So let's go ahead and do that, getting going 55 miles an hour. Looks like we've settled in officially at 55.6 decibels. And as far as how that rates among other minivans, it is going to be a touch louder than the Toyota Sienna, um, but it takes second place. It's above the Honda Odyssey and a little bit actually quieter than the 2022 Carnival that we tested out a, a couple years ago. And it's time for us to do our other signature thing, our slam dunk and air ball. Drew, what's the slam dunk for this carnival? So slam dunk is gonna be the exterior design. Uh, Kia went with, as we mentioned numerous times, a more SUV-like approach when they were designing this carnival. 
and I think that paid off. Um, it just doesn't look so much like a minivan as many of the rivals do. And of course, you know, minivans have a little bit of a stigma, so I think it makes it more comfortable for people to choose to have a minivan and all the extra practicality that comes along with that if it doesn't look so much like a minivan. Yeah, and I'll also add like a few interior bits too, not just the outside, but like the center console actually being a traditional like center console not completely pass through or whatnot i think it makes it feel a little bit more like an suv at least from the front seat as well now as far as the air ball is concerned what we're gonna say is that there are no other alternative powertrains or all-wheel drive on this carnival that's something that both the sienna as well as the chrysler pacifica have um, and that's really going to be one of the biggest cons of this carnival is that you're stuck with the V6 fuel economy. Yes, you get the refinement, but 22 miles a gallon is far from the 35 miles a gallon that you're going to get on the Sienna. The Pacifica also has a plug-in hybrid, which is, of course, very efficient as well. Um, so you're going to be paying the price at the pump for this carnival. And lastly here, I want to talk about your warranty. Five-year, 60,000 miles for your basic warranty. Ten-year, 100,000 miles for your powertrain. Now, how much will this minivan cost for 2024? Well, prices are going to rise only about $600, which given the current conditions, that is a very low price increase year over year. We're starting at $33,200 for LX, $38,700 for EX, $41,900 for SX, SX Prestige, $45,600. Now, this model is the EX. We do have the optional paint color as well as the 1365 destination. We are sitting at just a touch over $40,000, 40785 which is an incredible value for the amount of space you're getting in this minivan as well as the features they're throwing in. Guys, that's going to wrap up our in-depth review of the 2024 Kia Carnival EX. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decisions, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. By subscribing, you help us to get access to the newest cars on the market first, such as this 2024 model where we can show you some of the new model year changes as well as the pricing updates. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. We really appreciate it. And if you haven't had the chance already to follow us on TikTok and Instagram, please go ahead and do that. We also have the website that has a lot of useful information on it, so check that out as well. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.